Hey, what is up, you guys? Tegan here with High Point Scientific. Thank you so much for tuning in to our second episode of What's in the Night Sky this month. Tonight, I'm going to be taking you on a tour of the night sky in October. So settle down and let's take a look at what is really out there. So before we take a tour of the night sky in October, let's talk about variable stars. Now you may think that most stars shine with a constant unwavering light, but alas, there are stars that do change in brightness over a short or long period of time, and these are called variable stars. Now there are two basic types of variable stars. There are intrinsic and there are extrinsic variable stars. An intrinsic variable star is going to change in brightness due to factors on the surface or within the star itself. Now an extrinsic variable star is going to change in brightness due to environmental factors, such as an unseen dimmer star transiting the brighter star. So coincidentally, our first target that we're going to discuss tonight is in fact a variable star, which goes by the name of Delta Cephei. So if you locate the constellation of Cepheus in our night sky, you will find this pulsating variable just to the top right. You can also look under the constellation of Lacerta and you may be able to find it that way. Additionally, this pulsating variable does change in brightness from a magnitude 3.5 to a 4.4 over the period of about 5.36 days. Now, Delta Cephea has a pretty blue companion star and can be seen through your telescope at lower powers. So the next object in our tour is a deep sky object known as Messier 52. Now this is a beautiful open cluster located in the constellation of Cassiopeia. You can actually find it very near to the variable star we discussed, Delta Cephei. If you look right in between the constellation of Cepheus and Cassiopeia, that is where you will find this beautiful open cluster. Through a low powered eyepiece or a pair of binoculars, you will find this open cluster having a conical shape with a yellow star at the tip. Now for all the astrophotographers out there, this open cluster Messier 52 is often seen paired in photos with the bubble nebula. You can find Messier 52 in these photos just off to the side. The next object that we're going to look at is a beautiful planetary nebula that goes by the name the Helix Nebula. This planetary nebula lies about 530 light years away in the constellation Aquarius and is quite possibly the closest planetary nebula to our own star. You can find this target in the night sky if you look just to the left of Jupiter as well as underneath the constellation of Aquarius and above the constellation Pisces Austrinus. Now despite some of the challenges that this nebula may pose for visual observers, it is a favorite among the astrophotography community. If you image this nebula with narrowband filters, that's hydrogen alpha, sulfur 2, and oxygen 3 filters, it's going to provide you with a beautiful photo. Coming up next is the Blue Snowball, another planetary nebula that goes by the catalog number NGC 7662. You can find this nebula in the constellation Andromeda, but if you look closely, it's kind of smashed between four other constellations. That's Lacerta, Pegasus, Andromeda, and Cassiopeia. Now visually speaking, this nebula sits at a magnitude of about 8.3. If you look at this nebula through high magnifications, what you might see in the eyepiece is a slightly elongated hazy disk with a turquoise tint to it. As we recommend with most deep sky objects, try finding this nebula first using a low power or medium power eyepiece. If your telescope is large enough, then you can push those higher magnifications and see if you can see any internal structure or color. And remember, as you do increase magnification, your views of the object do get a bit dimmer. The next and last deep sky object on our list is a triple star system known as Eta Cassiopeia. You can find this in the constellation of Cassiopeia just above the star Navi. Additionally, if you have a low powered telescope, this is a perfect target as you can split this triple star system with low magnifications. The primary star appears to glow brilliantly white and the secondary star appears to have a coppery tone to it and its tertiary star has a pale blue tone to it. In October, Mars is completely lost by the brightness of our sun. It will appear at twilight in early November. Venus, on the other hand, is still going to shine extremely bright a few hours after sunset. It will also be accompanied by a beautiful crescent moon on the 8th and the 9th of October. Now heading into dawn in the middle of October, Mercury will become visible. Unfortunately, it is no longer visible after sunset. The moon, on the other hand, is going to be new on the 6th and it's going to be full on the 20th. 
Now both Jupiter and Saturn are going to continue to dominate the night sky throughout the month of October. They're going to be passed by a beautiful gibbous moon on the 13th, 14th, and 15th of October. They are going to be high in the sky and they're going to be perfect for viewing or imaging. Now Uranus and Neptune are also going to be high in the sky during the entire month of October. Uranus passes through opposition on the 4th, while Neptune actually passed through opposition last month. Again, I just want to say thank you so much for tuning in to this episode of What's in the Sky, October edition. If you have any questions, please let us know in the comments below. We'll be more than happy to assist. Please remember to like this video, subscribe to our YouTube channel so you don't miss any of our future videos. We hope to see you next month and clear skies.